Good afternoon and welcome to Carlam Cymru Revision Sessions. This session will focus on the higher tier Maths GCSE and will be presented by Mr Alan Walters from Gowerton School. The session will last around 45 minutes where the teacher will go through the relevant subject content. If you have any questions, please use the question and answer section and we will endeavour to answer your question during the session. The session will be recorded with the recording and any relevant resources uploaded to the East Goal website in the Carlam Cymru area. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I'm going to draw your attention to these three rules, the multiplication rules, the division rule and the power rule. You should be familiar with them. If not, I'd suggest you take a photograph of them or copy them down. OK, so. I've got a few questions I'd like you to look at first that probably would appear on intermediate level and here they are. I'd like you not to write them down, just to try them. Uh, I'm not going to give you a great deal of time because I've got an awful lot to go through, but I am going to say that you can pause the video at any time you wish and uh, play it when you're ready and I can give you the answers at your appropriate time. OK, so try those for a moment. <clears throat> OK, as I said, you can pause if you wish um, and then just play it when you're ready. So the first one um, is base six. So what we do is we write six there and we add the five and the three to give us eight following this rule up here. The second question, we deal with the numbers as we always have done. Five times two is ten and then we deal with the letters y to the five times y to the eight, um, three is y to the eight because we add up the five and the three. <clears throat> the letter D, D to the four times D to the five is D to the nine. OK, so that's the solution for two marks. OK, the next question, deal with the numbers four and three. Four times three is 12. Um, and then you've got A being um, A to the six and A to the seven. We add them up to give you a to the power 13 and that's the end of that question. The next one has a negative value in it. So four times five is 20. And then you've got y to the minus four and y to the one. There's really a one there. And if we add up a minus four and a one, we end up with minus three. So it's y to the minus three. OK. So that's a brief introduction to the multiplication rule. We're going to come back to it later. I'd like you to look at the division rule next and the division rule. There's a few questions there I'd like you perhaps to try. What you do is if you have the same base like uh, in the rule, the letter A, uh, you take away the indices. You have to be careful. Sometimes there's negative indices thrown in there to make it more difficult. <clears throat> I wouldn't copy these down. I would just try and answer them. You will get a record of this sent to you. It'll be published in the next day or so. OK, as I say, you can pause the video if you so wish. What you end up doing here is you've got K, 6 take away 2 is 4. 15 divided by 3 has always been 5. Then we deal with the indices. K, sorry, X, 6 take away the 2. There's your 2, there's your 6. 6 take away 2 is 4. 
and D, uh, there's, there's a one there, it's a hidden one. So nine take away one is eight, so it's D to the eight. <clears throat> the next one, 20 divided by four has always been five. And then you've got Y, five take away five is naught, okay? So I'll write it to the naught just for a moment. And then it's H and we've got four on the left, divide, sorry, take away nine and four take away nine is minus five. So what you've got is that and then H is to the minus five. Now, if you wish, and you'll find out later, anything to the power naught is one, that is correct, but this is also correct. Why, sorry, five, say it again, five, h to the minus five. You can leave off the y to the naught because y to the naught is one that we'll find out later. The last question, we end up with four, um, eight and then minus four, take away one is minus five. So that's your answer for that one. There's one more I'd like you to try. <coughs> I'm going to suggest with this one, 30 take away 30 divided by five is six. Y, and you've got, now this is a tricky one, minus four is the indice, take away a minus six. Now, when you've got two negatives written together like that, it's minus four plus six, which is equal to two. So the letter Y has a power of two, okay? So that's something again we'll come back to later. We're going to look at the power rule now. And the power rule, let's see if I reduce the size of the screen here. No, oh, I've only put the three questions there. I'd like you to try those. This is the power rule. This is where you multiply the index value, but I will say you've got to cube that number, you've got to cube that number, you've got to cube that number like you would whenever you cube those um, further down the school. <clears throat> so once again, pause the video if you need. Uh, five. I'll write it over here. I'll write this one out first. Four times four times four is 64. Okay, and then y squared times what really is y squared times y squared is y cubed. So together is 64 y cubed. Sorry, y, I've done that wrong to the power six, 64 to the power six. Now, obviously the quick way of doing that is just to cube four to get 64, and then you multiply these index values two by three to get six. Okay, I'll go to the one above, five times five times five is 125, and then you multiply these together, two times three is six, so it's y to the power six. When you do this one, two cubed, is two times two times two is eight. And then when you deal with the letter Y, you are multiplying two by three, as shown here. All right, you multiply that two by the three. So you have Y to the power six, or you could write it out like I did in the question above. And when you deal with the letter N, you're multiplying the five by the three. I covered that, so I'll, you're multiplying the five by the three. So you are then five threes are 15. <clears throat> so you get eight y to the six, n to the 15. Now, I would consider that the majority of them questions could appear at intermediate level. What specifically uh, does come to higher tier is when you have to deal with fractions. So 
if I show you one of them, you add up the indices. So you were adding three quarters plus nine quarters. And three and nine is 12. 12 quarters is better known as three. So you could say y to the 12 over four, which simplifies to be y cubed. You'd have to say y cubed. OK, so um, I'm going to show you the two questions underneath. I'd like you to try question 14 and 15, please. So you multiply the numbers out and you add the indices. In this case, you're adding fractions. OK, I'll move on. Pause the video if you need to. Four fives are 20. And then you got y to the, now if you add a quarter and seven quarters, we got eight quarters. So you would need to write that as 20y squared. OK, with the next question, 14 times 3, OK, is 42. And then it's k, and when we add two thirds, and seven thirds, we got nine thirds. But you would need to go and simplify it and say 42 k to the power three. OK, now I've dealt with multiply in a second. I'm going to move on to dividing. OK, um, so here we go. I'll show you one. 14 divided by two is seven. And what we end up doing then is taking these away because it's the division rule. So 11 quarters take away seven quarters is four quarters. So 11 quarters take away seven quarters is four quarters and four quarters is the same as one. And you can put one there if you wish, okay? So I'd like you to try question 17. You can look at question 18 if you wish. Just pause for just a moment. Again, 44 divided by 11 is 4. On the letter Y, we are saying 18 quarters take away 6 quarters is 12 quarters, and 12 quarters simplifies to 3. So it becomes 4Y to the power 3. OK, so, um, right. What I'd advise that you do with these questions is you deal with the top first. So it's just an extension of what we've got above. On the top, we have y to the, and if you add two thirds and seven thirds, we've got nine thirds. I think we did it in one of the questions above, um, over y squared. Nine thirds is the same as three. And then this is a division. It's just written in a different way. So you take the indices away and you're left with y or y to the one, okay? So try the one underneath. And there's another one there for you to try as well. <coughs> Again, I'll remind you if you if you want more time, you pause the screen and then play when you're ready. OK, we'll deal with the top or the numerator first. 
uh, the numbers are the four and the three, and four threes are 12. Now, two thirds added to five thirds is eight thirds. So it's 12 y to the eight thirds. Sorry, eight thirds, yeah. Underneath, wait there. Uh, um, I'm doing that wrong, it's seven thirds. My apologies. Oh, okay. When you add two thirds and five thirds, you've got seven thirds. Underneath, you've got two y to the one third, it remains the same. Okay. Right. I'm going to simplify that. Well, actually, I can't simplify it to uh, be a nice number like y to the power two or y to the power three. I'm going to deal with seven over three. So, first of all, 12 divided by two are the numbers. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And here I'm dealing with, it's a division rule. So it's 7 thirds, take away 1 third, is 6 thirds. So it's y to the power 6 thirds, which we need, then need to simplify to say y, 6y squared. The next question. OK, again, okay, deal with the numbers on the top first. Five fours are 20. Y to the power, if I add 13 over four, ah, look at this, it's a negative. So 13 plus seven, or plus a negative seven is six. So this is six thirds, six quarters, should I say. OK, so I'll repeat, you're adding 13 and and you're adding that to a negative seven to give you six quarters. I'm going to write the other one exactly as I see it. No change. So when we deal with the numbers, 20 divided by two has always been 10. And then you're saying six quarters take away two quarters because we're dividing and we end up with four quarters. And four quarters you all know is the same as y or y to the one okay <coughs> so what we've done so far is simplify we've tried to write uh, the complex work that's been given to us we've tried to write it in a simpler form i'm going to move on to uh, indices now where we evaluate so i'm going to go on to another another note page here there. We're going to evaluate. Now the word evaluate means work out the value of. So in this case, I want an answer like 40 or 50. OK, what we were doing before was we, we may have been reducing two terms and simplifying it to make one term. OK, so once again, there's a set of rules. We'll also need to know. Um, there we are. They're highlighted there for you. Oh, there we are. I would make a note of them if you've never seen them before. I hope you've seen them because these are the rules that we tend to apply to higher tier maths uh, exclusively. OK, now. The first one is called the negative index rule. And I've got a few questions that relate to that. OK. So I'm going to a to the minus n, I'll write it up here. So if I do the first question and then I'd like you to try a few after that. Two to the minus four. All right, if I leave that on show. I've got, if it's a negative index rule, it's always one over. 2 and that negative 4 becomes just the number 4 because that negative n has just become the number n there. OK, so obviously evaluating now uh, square numbers and cube numbers come into it an awful lot, but here this means 2 times, so it means, and you won't need to write all this down, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 
2, 2 is a 4, 4, 2 is an 8, 8, 2 is a 16. That's what they want. They'll just be a one mark question, that would. 1 over 16 is the answer. So just to recap, you put 1 over the value and then the root that was there, which is in this case a 4, right? Negative 4 up there becomes a positive 4 underneath. So I'd like you to try the following questions. I'll pause for a moment. OK, as I said, pause the screen if you want a little bit more time and then play when you're ready. So the first question that I've asked you to do. Is you put one over. And in this case, eight and you drop the negative index. So eight squared, I'd expect you to know your square numbers. Eight times eight is 64, so you could write this down or go straight into. And that's the end of the question. OK, the next one. One over, as it suggests here. One over 10 and then you drop the negative index, it's just 10 cubed. So what you end up doing is one over 10 times 10 times 10, which in this case is one over a thousand. They may ask you then to write it as a decimal for that question. I'd, I'd hope that you could write down 0 0.001. And then we've got this question. First of all, it's one over and then it's a half squared. OK, and if you wanted to work in decimals, you could say one over 0 0.5 squared. OK, now. One over a half times a half. You multiply the top, one times one is one, and two times two is four. So one over a quarter. <coughs> well, we show shared by a quarter. We're asking how many quarters fit into one whole number, and the answer should be four. OK, so that's the negative index rule. We're going to look at the zero rule that is more than straightforward. They often come up as one mark questions and the zero index rule, which I wrote above. Uh, anything to the power naught is one. It's written like this. So look at this. If you tap that in on your calculator, by the way, this is I. I am just concentrating on uh, the cal non calculator work today. Um, there is a section where you would need to use a calculator, but seeing as I can't see the calculator that you may have in front of you, I think it's best your teachers work with that one. Um, so we are doing non-calculator work today. Right, this is the rule. Anything to the power naught is one. We did it right at the beginning uh, on the other worksheet. Even if it's a letter to the power naught is one. And it's as simple as that. It's often a one mark question. End of. Right. The unit fraction rule. OK, now it's written here. A to the one over N. And that's how it's written. 
OK, that's what you will have to learn. So. In this particular case, um, you've got 64 is the number like the, like the letter A there. 64 goes in inside the root sign. And in this particular case, because it's a third, it's the cube root. If there was a five there, it's the fifth root, but you probably need a calculator then, right? If it was a two, it's the square root. So you should know your cube numbers, and hopefully you will know that the cube root of 64 is four, because four times four is 16, and 16 times four is 64. You could make 64, you can make a block of 64 by going four down, four cross, four back. OK, <clears throat> so. Another two questions there I'd like you to try. I'll just pause for a moment. OK, if you know your cube roots, you should be able to do this quite easily. OK, so in this particular case, it's the cube root of, because there's a three there, a thousand. And you'll know that the cube root of a thousand is 10, because 10 times 10 times times 10 is a thousand. This one is another way of saying the cube root of 125. And I'm hoping that without the calculator, you'll know that the answer is 5, because 5 times 5 times 5 <coughs> is 125. OK, now we're going to combine the rules. OK, so. We're going to combine two of the rules. Because it's a negative power, it means one over something. Now, because it's, if we add nine to the half, it means the square root of nine. So I'm just going to put that down here. We tend not to put a two there when we talk about the square root, but we can if we wish. But because it's a negative power, it's one over. So in this case, it's one over the square root of nine. And I'm hoping that you'll all know that the square root of nine is three. OK. Um, something else to think about with question 12 and 13. I'd like you to think about them, see what you get with those. Okay, if we have a look, I say pause the screen if you want more time. If you have it, if I give you a question that said 27 to the power a third, it means the cube root of 27, which we did in one of the questions above. Okay, because it's a negative power, you must write one over the cube root of 27. And that may get you one mark. And the cube root of 27, I'm hoping you'll know that 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So 1 over the cube root of 27 is a third. OK, and that's that's our answer. 
The next one is a little bit more difficult. So we'll deal with it bit by bit. Because it's a negative power, it's one over. Now, if it was 64 to the power one third, it means the cube root of 64. OK, so that's what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to ignore the two. I'm just going to do imagine it was to the um, to the power one third underneath. So we've got 64 cube root of 64. Now. What I tend to do then is I bracket it off and whatever the answer is, I will then square it. OK, so the cube root of 64 is that written like that or to the power third is written like that. And then I'm going to square it and it's a negative power, meaning one over. So. One over, we did the cube root of 64 earlier and it was four. And then we're going to square the four. And four squared is 16, so I believe it's one over 16. That's quite a difficult question. Question 13. You're finding a half or something. So basically you're dividing by two. Three ways of doing it. If I said um, two to the power six divided by two, but why not go with two to the power six divided by two to the power one? Because two to the power one is. Sorry, you could do this way. Yeah, divide is two to the power five, right? And two to the power five means two times two so on to get 32. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is a half times two to the six. And really it's two that that suggests the same six and you divide in by this six, take away this one to give you the five. OK. We're back to question 14, right? See if you can treat question 14 like question 12. So it's one over, then you find the cube root and then you square it. OK, so pause the screen if you want a bit more time. Uh, here goes. So because it's a negative power, it's one over. And because it's like there's a third. There's a third and then I'm going to square it afterwards. So meaning the cube root of 125 and then I'm going to square it. So I'm going to get that answer as though it's one third and then I'm going to apply the two to square it. So. The cube root of 125 is 5. And then I'm going to square it, so I do believe it's 1 over 25. OK. OK, a couple of intermediate level questions now. I'm going to suggest just have a look at them. We, we're not going to be able to, I don't think I'm going to be able to give you a great deal of time to go through them. Try and have a think what you would do and we'll I'll go through them in just a moment now. <clears throat> OK. So what I'm hoping you'll have done here, 5 cubed is 125. It is 5 times 5 times 5. 3 squared is 9 and then you put one number on top of the other. You multiply them out and you get 1, 1. 2, 5, OK. With the next one, 2 to the power 4, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So I do believe that's 16 times 25. And I know four 25s are 100. So four groups of 100 then I do believe is 400. OK, you might take a little longer to do that or even a lot quicker than I take. Right. With question 17, we're using the work we've done above. We might end up with a fraction answer. Or we might be able to evaluate it to be a whole number. 
OK, so have a look at questions 17 and 18 in a moment, and then I'm going to have to um, push on and, and try and get them done. OK, pause the screen if you need to. Um, a negative power means one over. Because um, it's a half, it's the square root of. It was a third to be the cube root. There's no negative power here. There is a fraction, so it's just the cube root of 27. OK. The square root of 81 is 9, so it's 1 over 9 times. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So it's three over nine or one third. The next question. Because it's a negative power, it's one over. And it's a third meaning it's the cube root. One over the cube root of a thousand times. Uh, there's no negative power, so it's just the square root of 64. OK, so one over the cube root of a thousand is 10. And then the square root of 64 is eight. So when you multiply those out, you get eight over 10 or four over five. Right. Same sort of thing then with question 19 and 20, if you have a look at those. I will say with question 19, there's no negative power with the first part. There is a negative power with the second part, so you need a fraction. It's a fraction in the first part. For question 20, it's not a fraction in the second part. We'll have a look at question 19. As I said, there's no negative power. So you deal with the fraction bit first. So 27 to the power third. Deal with that. And then whenever you get the answer, you're going to square it. So I'll write it over here. So 27. The cube root of 27 is when we write the third there. And then whatever the answer to that is, I'm going to square it afterwards. Because it's a negative power, it means one over. So one over and a half to the power half means it's a square root. OK, so one over the square root of 100. It's one over because it's a negative power. OK, so deal with this bit first. The cube root of 27 is 3 and 3 squared is what we've got there. The square root of 100 is 10. OK, so that's what we should get from each section. 3 squared is 9. And then 9 over 10 is the answer. <clears throat> now with the next question, there is a negative power. So we're basically doing that, but it's a negative power. OK, so to start this off, it's one over, and I'll deal with the, the, the third bit. 
and then whatever I get, then I'm going to square. So 27 to the power of third would be cube root of 27. And then whatever the answer is, I'm going to square it. So that's what you do for the first section. For the second section, there's no negative power. If you've got a half here, it's just square root. If you've got a third, it's the cube root. So we've got one. Let me just create a bit more space here. OK, so. One over now the cube root of 27 is three, as we've done in the question above, and then we square it. And the square root of 25 is just five. OK. So three squared is nine. And when you put them together, five times a ninth is five over nine. OK. I think we got a chance to do one more question. There's a few questions here that I will have put answers to when you get the work posted tomorrow. OK, and the worksheets will be posted and this video will be posted as well. Um, and the solutions will be posted. OK, if you try that last question before I summarise. OK, so there's no negative powers. So it's just 16. If it was 16 to the half, it's the square root of 16. And then that three on the top means whatever the answer is, we're going to cube it. There is a negative power here, so it means one over four cubed. OK, so. By here, the square root of 16 is four, so we've got four. And then four cubed. I'm not going to try and work that out because surprisingly enough, four cubed times one over four cubed. You could work it out to be 64 and work that out to be one over 64. But, you know, with the rules we had earlier, um, it's a division rule. Four to the three divided by four to the three is four to the naught and four to the naught is one. But if you would rather work with 64 times one over 64, to give you one, that's fine. OK. Just a couple of things I want to remind you about. I would say you've got to show all your work ins because marks are still awarded until the second error is made. OK. There it is, marks, you know, a lot of these harder questions, maybe two or three marks. So show your work ins because you'll get marks until the second error is made. You've got to learn all these rules. They're not given to you. Learn them. OK. Um, you need to know your square numbers and your cube numbers. Because, for instance, um, the cube root of 125 is 5. Right. The square root of 64 is 8. You need to know them and other ones. And then that's a summary of the six rules that we've looked at today. Um, they tend to look at the top rules on their own in the intermediate level. At higher tier, we combine them. And then these tend to be only for higher tier. So I hope that's been of use to you. Uh, you'll get the work posted uh, in the next day or so. Thank you very much.